In June 1983, Jim Gordon reached a breaking point with the voices tormenting him. He drove to his mother's home in Los Angeles one night, took a hammer, and struck the 71-year-old woman on the head four times. Osa Gordon fell to the floor but remained conscious. Realizing she was still alive, Jim then grabbed a knife and stabbed her four times in the heart, causing instant death. From the mid-1960s to the mid-1970s, Gordon, a Los Angeles native and student of the versatile session man Hal Blaine, was among the most sought-after drummers. Gordon started drumming as a teen and was part of Phil Spector's famed studio ensemble, The Wrecking Crew, alongside Blaine. He played on significant albums like The Beach Boys, Pet Sounds, The Birds, the notorious Bird Brothers, George Harrison's All Things Must Pass, and Steely Dan's Pretzel Logic. His portfolio included diverse acts from Joan Baez to Tom Petty. One of his memorable contributions was a drum break on the incredible bongo band's Apache, frequently sampled by rap artists such as Jay-Z and Busta Rhymes. Gordon toured with Clapton, Carl Radle, and Bobby Whitlock, the core of Derek and the Dominoes, in 1970. Clapton and Gordon co-wrote the 1971 hit, Layla, earning Gordon his sole Grammy Award. The onset of Gordon's schizophrenia remains unknown. He felt ashamed and embarrassed, believing he should manage himself better. It appears the condition may have started in childhood. When drumming, Gordon felt in control, escaping the voices in his head. But when he stopped playing, his struggles returned. Osa, a maternity nurse, grew concerned about her son. Her husband, Peter Gordon, entered Alcoholics Anonymous in 1958. Osa suspected Gordon struggled with drugs and alcohol, urging him to seek help from a psychiatrist. But he refused, believing he could manage the voices in his head. When he finally sought help, confusion clouded the diagnosis. Gordon's high-functioning nature masked his severe mental illness for years. Despite exhibiting signs such as imagining things and hearing voices. His behavior was attributed to other factors in his competitive world. By the early 1970s, Gordon's outbursts escalated, leading to a violent incident with his girlfriend, Rita Coolidge. Despite seeking treatment in 1975, Gordon wasn't forthcoming about his symptoms, combining prescribed medications with illegal drugs until 1978 when he started regular treatment. As Gordon's delusions worsened, he struggled to leave his apartment, compelled by voices to discard his possessions. This torment persisted until the night before he killed his mother. After multiple suicide attempts, hospitalizations, and escape attempts from mental hospitals, one voice, resembling his mother's, began commanding him to kill her, becoming his chief tormentor and overriding his desires to eat, sleep, or pursue his passion for drumming. On the night of Osa's death, Gordon consumed a significant amount of alcohol. He believed that by hitting his mother with a hammer, she would pass away without feeling pain. However, his attempt failed. The stabbings were extremely brutal, causing the knife to become stuck in the floor. Gordon then cleaned himself up at a gas station and went to a Mexican restaurant. When the police arrived at his apartment the next morning, they found him curled up under his coffee table. Upon entering, Gordon confessed, expressing remorse for his actions but also stating that his mother had been tormenting him for years. Gordon showed no remorse and was convinced that his mother was controlling and torturing him. He was unaware of the severity of his mental illness as he lived in a completely different reality. Osa was described as a beloved matriarch, especially close to her granddaughter, Amy. Gordon's family was shocked and horrified by her murder, with his brother even advocating for his execution. Comment below the right answer. Thank you for watching. Please hit that subscribe button and the like button.